Hey, I want to talk about the ladies sugar push variations today, sugar tuck variations, developing your leg coming off of your anchor, obviously your anchor uh, itself, and some other simple variations that you might add to your West Coast swing just to dress it up a little bit and make things better like immediately, okay? So first and foremost, I want to talk to you about doing your normal anchor. Um, again, you want to retract your left leg. Anytime you go to do an anchor in this dance, don't bring your left leg back kind of nondescript. Don't just drag it back there. So make a bigger deal out of placing that foot where you want it for your five and six. You also want to try not to rock back and forth. So if you take your foot too far back and leave your front foot where it is, it gives you this rocking back and forth action. There are some anchor variations that you can do that will cause a little bit of that, but typically if the feet are that far apart, you wouldn't allow the heel of the back foot to touch the ground and you would take that back and it would cause a little bit more of a ripple when you do that. And you would either bring that foot underneath you so your base isn't too wide and then you'd go ahead and develop your knee and walk out on your one or you have the option of doing a five and put that down six and bringing this back to you before you walk out on your one. Either of those variations is okay and there's different reasons why you would use one or the other. Just if your feet are too far apart when you finish your anchor, you can see that there's a little bit of space between my back toe and my front heel. When your feet are this far apart, your, your stride is pretty much already done. And so it makes your one look odd when you walk out because there's really not much develop, uh, development of the knee that can happen before you walk out. So in order to get the good development of your knee, your feet should pretty much be overlapping a little bit. So you can take your knee to its apex before you walk out on your one. And just remember that toe becomes a heel. I use that in class all the time. So for those of you that don't know what that means, where my toe sits, my front toe sits right now. When I develop that leg all the way, when I take the knee to the apex and I extend my foot out in front of me, my heel now takes the place of where my toe was. So you end up going toe becomes a heel when you walk out. A huge misconception when you ladies go to walk out on your one is that your one needs to be big. I just want you to realize that when you're standing in anchor position, that your feet are already two thirds of the way through your natural stride. Well, what does that mean? Well, if we were gonna actually measure your full stride, we would measure that from the foot behind you. So let's say we took a walking step and a second walking step. That was my natural stride. So our natural stride would be measured from the foot behind us. It would swing past the standing leg. The knee makes it to its apex and then you would step forward onto that foot. And that's pretty much your natural stride. It's like, okay, that's your natural gait. So when you're standing in anchor position, which is what's required of us to look like West Coast swing, you're already two thirds of the way through your natural stride. And what I find is that new girls are trying to take what they think is a full size stride from there, which makes your body suspend between your feet. And it's very difficult for you to continue to move through space. So it causes a little bit of a stall between the one and the two. And then the leaders feel like they need to continue to pull you down the slot, which is what you don't want. Once the gentleman leads you down the slot or the leader leads you down the slot, you want to go ahead and be able to move through the slot without any more help from your leader. That way, if he decides to rush you, give you a little extra juice to get to a sound in the music that you might want to get to and stop, or he wants to get to and stop, he can go ahead and give you a little bit of extra juice by giving you a little bit of extra lead. So he should not be pulling you down the slot the entire way. <clears throat> so as you go to walk out, what you want, here's my natural stride again, is to simulate what your natural stride would look like. So you're already two thirds of the way through your natural stride when you finish your anchor. And so you've only got that one third left. And so that's gonna make your one look a lot more comfortable and more normal. If you do a full size stride from there, it's a little bit like a red flag. People watch you and they're like, wow, she's a really good dancer, but something's going on on her one. When you move your foot prematurely, your knee starts to bend, but doesn't make it to its apex. When it starts to bend, but you move your foot prematurely, it makes your one look funny. So you wanna finish your anchor, develop your knee to its apex. Remember that you're driving off of the entire left foot. You are not gonna roll up to the ball of the foot and push. That once again is gonna make your one too big. So you're gonna finish five and six and you'll be 
driving from that heel, remembering that you're settling into your hip. You're not settling this way when you do West Coast Swing. That's a huge misconception. You're actually settling on the angle of your feet. So my hip is moving this direction and I'm going to develop my knee to its apex and then toe becomes a heel and I'm pushing off the entire foot really off of the left heel when I go to go forward to keep up with the hand that's moving me through space. I'll give you the other view of this from this side. So you go five and six and you allow your hip to settle diagonal, drive from that foot. It goes cheek, your left cheek causes your knee to respond. That is the reason why your right leg is bending. So it goes cheek, knee, and then foot, two, three, and four, five, and six. Also, uh, I'll do it this way first. Uh, but before I forget, I do get asked the question a lot, should I land on the ball, toe, or heel of my foot when I move forward on the one? <clears throat> if you know anything about other dance styles, you know that there are rhythm dances and there are smooth dances. In rhythm dances, the body precedes the foot, say cha-cha. So if I'm dancing cha-cha, my body is pitched forward. And as a result of the body being pitched forward, it causes you to take toe leads. So when you see people doing good cha-cha, they're not taking the heel leads because the body precedes the foot. And so it dictates that you're going to be taking a ball or a toe lead moving forward. However, in West Coast Swing, we want your sails to be open and we want you to be upright. You ladies should be thinking about your head being the last thing that leaves when you walk out on your one. And so it looks funny when girls will go five and six and they lean forward. So as a result, when we do smooth dances, say waltz, say foxtrot, when you take a full stride in those dances, we take heel leads in those dances. Now, the more experience you, be, you get, you're gonna end up taking more of a heel flat or a ball flat, so it won't be overly pronounced. However, as a styling option, some of the ladies out there today are really accentuating the fact that they're taking a heel lead and they might push it out there and slide it across the ground a little bit before they walk out. Five and six and slide it out there before they walk out. If the music entices you to do that, go ahead and knock yourself out. But just as a rule of thumb in all dances, where your head is positioned and your body pos is positioned dictates whether you take a heel or a toe lead. So if you're gonna be upright, then taking ball leads or toe leads are not the correct option for walking out in West Coast Swing. So as you walk out, you'd be taking a little bit of a heel lead, which allows you to roll from the back of the foot to the front of the foot, which helps you move through space with continuity. Whereas when you take toe leads and dances, they're typically more staccato, so they're more of a checking type Type action, a stopping type action, instead of a going or continuing to go action. Now, if I do this face in the camera, uh, I talk about you ladies having three leg lines all the time. So it's like instead of having your knee outside your toe and being on the outside edge of your foot, your knee tracks slightly towards your center. And you can see that with me standing here, I'm a little bit bow legged. But when I dance, I try my best to have my knees track inside my toe line whenever I'm dancing to make it more attractive. We're trying to be attractive when we dance. But when you step backwards to do your anchor, if you just drag that back there, that's not gonna be as attractive as if you pick that up with your three leg lines. What do I mean? Well, your knee is moving, your thigh is moving slightly inward, your shin is slightly out, and your toe is slightly out of that. And then as I pick that up and retract it, I'll take that back and I'll finish my anchor in that position. Right. So very attractively placing that into my five. One, two, three, and four, placing that into my five. Now, most of the girls today, most all of the pro girls today are finishing deliberately with their feet apart when they do an anchor because you wanna have what's called follow through when you walk out on your one. So when you take your foot backwards, you would go five and they separate their feet a little bit at the end or they'll go behind and separate their feet a little bit at the end, which also promotes you sending your hip past your foot. Again, not this way. So please stop doing this. This is not correct. I don't care who says it. This is not correct because now your feet are on this line, on this diagonal line, and you're pushing your butt straight backwards so it always feels like you're falling over a little bit and there's no weight on your front foot. So what you actually want to do is send your hip past your foot on the angle of your base. So you can see sometimes when you'll watch the pro ladies that their body looks a little bit like a sign language K because my torso is slightly this way and then this leg jets out and it makes it look a little bit like a K. 
So you go one, two, and you go three and four. Place that foot like you mean it. Separate your feet just a little bit. Send that hip out there with two straight legs. Then as you get over there, it makes this foot want to release. I like to say you're going to drag a little bit of sand with that foot without turning your toe in. Drag a little bit of sand with that. Develop the knee when you send from your glute at the top of your left glute. Send and it goes cheek, knee, foot, and walk out. So we're going to go five and six, so one, two, and walk out. When this happens, your hips are moving to the left. Try to avoid letting your right foot track to your left hemisphere. Keep that on the right half of your person. So your knees close. You don't need to be worried about your ankles closing. Your knees close, you walk out, and you keep your feet on separate skis when you go to walk out and do that. Which brings me to the three and four of your sugar push. So oftentimes your ladies are being surprised. Remember that you know it's a sugar push because the gentleman did not leave the slot. So when you walk up there and you act like you're surprised on your three, that's just really not acceptable after a couple of weeks worth of class. If the gentleman or the leader is still in the slot, then you know you're gonna be stopping. So make that more attractive, more athletic and feminine at the same time. So if you use the principle that your feet are gonna be turned out about 30 degrees at all times when you do West Coast Swing, and I do mean all times, and you use your three leg lines, when you do your three and four, you do a one, two step up here, three and four, and do an anchor on your five and six. Now that's basic sugar push footwork and yours should be at least that attractive. Don't you let me outgirl you, okay? So you go one, two, and you go three and four and place your foot like you mean it, separate a little bit, send that past your hip, baby on your hip, drag a little bit of sand, develop your knee, toe becomes a heel and walk out with a little bit of a heel lead on your one, two. So that would be forward together back. This is a forward coaster step. So it goes one, two pretty feet, three and four, five and six. Now, that's not always gonna happen. So that's where your first anchor comes into, uh, excuse me, um, sugar push variation comes into play. So sometimes the guys end up giving you a little bit more slots. So let's say that they back up a little bit more than the norm. So what ends up happening is your three ends up not being short, it ends up being long, but then there's the stop, the compression that says, hey, that's the end of the line for you. And you may not always feel like you can collect your feet and bring them absolutely together. This is a very popular variation. And you would do what I call a cha-cha check because your foot is in front of your person. So you would go one, two, forward, three, but you don't really feel like you have the ability to close your feet because the compression was pretty short right there. So instead you'll go forward one, two, and check and back and triple steps. You can see that I didn't bring my and to even. One, two, check, leave my left toes touching the floor, push back to them, step backwards, retract this with my three leg lines, place it where I want it, deliberately separate my feet a little bit and send my hip past my foot, right? So that goes one, two, check, three and four, now five and slightly side, send your hip past your foot, develop your knee and walk out. So that's if you get a little bit of extra slot. So your three ended up sailing a little bit, but then you got stopped kind of abruptly because that was the end of the line and you didn't bring your feet to even. Now you ladies can also change this up yourself, but dancing with the less experienced guy, they're gonna give you a bunch of different sugar push variations and dancing with the really experienced guy, they're gonna give you a bunch of sugar push variations. So all of these are good for you and now you have an attractive answer, right? Now, if he doesn't give you as much room, you may feel like, oh, I don't even get to step forward or you might get the leg swing of the three, but you get the leg swing, but that was the end of the line before you got to put weight on it, which could cause a touch step. And maybe I lead that because I want you to spend a whole beat of music on the three. So I back up as the leader and go one, two, and I stop you and I do a touch and a step. So it may say, I love you instead of I, you're doing a triple step over a single syllable word, you, and now I'm getting you to touch there. I love you instead of having you do a triple step back and do your anchor step, right? So that might be a touch. That's another variation. One, two, touch, three, step, four, anchor step, five, and six. If he stops you shorter than that, you may not get the leg swing of the three at all. One, two, it stays behind you. Now, instead of just leaving it static for three and four, five and six, 
the more experienced girls are gonna do what I like to call a knee pop. So they'll straighten that knee and rotate the hip a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you can see that I'm just giving that a little bit of a pulse there so that it addresses the third count of that pattern. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, last variation for your sugar push. The guys, a lot of times the leaders are doing this throwaway sugar push these days uh, where they go to this other hand and they give you a little compression with this palm of, of this hand and you ladies come in and it makes you feel like you need to turn sideways a little bit. So I might be lying. You can use these different variations. So if it's super short, you could still do this knee pulse one because he didn't let the leg swing happen. Otherwise you could come up here and because he turns you, you could take this foot behind three and four and do an anchor step for five and six. So you might want to get weight on that foot because he allowed you to have the space to go forward on that one. As a result of your body being slightly sideways, you may not want to twist all the way around to do your anchor on your five and six there. So it may start where you're facing as though the slot is that way. One, two, three and four and I'll pretend like my slot is here and then rotate and finish that five and six or whatever other variation you might know. But you don't have to always go from under rotated to square to the slot to do your anchor. I don't want you to feel handcuffed that way. So the other side of that would go one, two, three, and four. Start your anchor that way and then turn and face your dude. But if he doesn't let you go forward enough, just do a knee pop, three, step on your four. You could step forward and do this anchor, five and six. Or again, just start that back the way you're facing and let it rotate into your natural anchor when you do that. So that's some really good sugar push variations for you ladies and some of the common ones that you're gonna get based again on whether it's a newer gentleman or leader and they don't give you a lot of slot or they give you too much slot and then you find the compression and when they give that hand a little bit of throw away right there, okay? Cool. So now that covers your basic anchor and your knee and how it develops walking into your one and the foot action you're gonna use and those sugar push variations. Let's talk about your, um, your sugar tuck variations. So sugar tuck, leaders out there, if you're watching this video, Realize that sugar tuck is the most overled pattern in the dance of West Coast Swing. It makes us feel cool and we can use it to hit music. And the pattern is not necessarily all that easy for you ladies. You think it's just a basic pattern, but it's not all that easy to make attractive. So as you ladies are doing a sugar tuck, you're going to get some variations as well. I teach a basic sugar tuck like a basic sugar push. So you would go one, two, and you would go forward three, and your ankles would come together. And as you step down onto your left foot and you would twist and step away on your four, it won't get all the way to square away. And then from here, you would go into it, a workaround anchor on your five and six. You're like, what's a workaround anchor? Well, a workaround anchor is anytime you're turning to the right in the dance of West Coast Swing, you're not facing your dude when the anchor begins. So one, two, three, and four, instead of you feeling frantic and getting around like you have to face him to start your anchor, you're just more casual than that. One, two, three, and four, and let it gradually work around, which also gives you a little bit of face time with the audience. So you go one, two, and you go three, and four, and you go side replace and over gives you a little chance to spend time with the audience you can even stay under rotated and don't face the leader until you come out one two three and four five and stay sideways and don't turn your head until you walk down the slot which is a really nice variation makes it look different so it just gives you some more tricks in your bag okay now just like sugar push, sometimes the guys go a little bit deeper on, for the three. The leaders go a little bit deeper for the three, and sometimes they go shorter. So if it's a little bit deeper and you get caught, you might get that check feeling again. So you go three and turn around, step on the foot four, and do your five and six. Any of these, I do want you to realize that you are moving away from the leader on the four, and then again away from the leader at the start of five. That is normal spacing, and that's what make that feel better. So one, two, you are moving your spine away on the four, and you are moving your spine away again on the five when you go around to do that work around anchor right there. Now, when they stop you short, you have this option as well. One, two, oh, a touch and a step when you do that. Most of the time when it's that short, the more experienced girls are doing more of a check back. So what happens is they'll do a one, two, leave the right foot where it is and go three, replace and twist, land on four, again, step away, five, 
and six. And from this other side, you might go one, two, oh, that's really short, three and, and you'll notice that I'm rotating my hips right here. So as you go to do that three, take your right hip forward. You know it's a sugar tuck by this time, but you don't want to telegraph it and turn away when you go to do that. We're here to hit this third count of this pattern here. So one, two, oh, turn your hips to the left so that your right hip goes forward three. Yes, so one, two, three, and four, and away five and six. A little bit, mm, I wouldn't say more advanced, but another option that you have there when the connection, connection is super duper short, connection is super short, is if the four, So one, two, and three instead of three and. So one, two, and three, which you're gonna see a lot. When you do that one, two, and three, again, my hip is twisting, one, two, and three. So I've turned my hips to the left. This doesn't really get any heavier, but now my thighs have come together at the top and I'll use that connection between my toned legs to twist me to get to the four and then go into the workaround anchor right there. So this goes one, two, and three, twist, four, step away, five, and six. And you, make, you can make that as smooth or as staccato as you want. One, two, and three, four, five, and six. Or one, two, and three, four, five, and six. Depending on how the music makes you feel and the message that your partner is conveying to you. So that is a really, really popular version of a sugar tuck variation. One, two, and three instead of three and. And so that's some sugar tuck variations for you there. In addition to that, one of the easiest ways, and I'll wrap up with this, I could go on for days about other elements, but um, one of the easiest ways for you to address music is by doing a single step anchor. So I mentioned earlier that I might, as the leader, convince you to do a touch of some sort on the three of a sugar push or on the three of a sugar tuck because there's a single syllable word there. So if you will start to hum the words to the songs that you're dancing to, you typically know the songs well enough you can hum them, even if you don't actually know the actual lyric. <laughs> uh, and so what you could do is go, oh, that's a single syllable word. So as a rule of thumb, unless the leader is causing you to do a triple step, you have the option of doing a single step anchor. So let's say you went one, two, three, and four. Oh, there's a single syllable word, you, love. So I would take a single step anchor. Now, this is a broad statement, but it's pretty much true when you listen to music. Most all emphasized words happen on odd numbers. So you would typically do that on a five. So if you're gonna take a single step anchor, one, two, three, and four, five. And you should do that with a little bit of authority. One, two, instead of it just kind of being quiet and you doing five. So typically you would pick that foot up and do it with a little more authority, three and four, pick it up and put it down and give it a little extra something, something so that you're addressing that single syllable word. Suddenly everybody looks at you like, oh, you're so musical. You can also do that on a spin. It doesn't matter what kind of pattern it is. There's still an anchor at the end of that, three and four, step five, and now you're ready to walk out. You could bring your feet together there. Typically, uh, as if I'm doing that and I wanted to hit that word right there, I would pick that up and take it a little bit diagonal back so that my hip still has a reason to move left and then develop that to walk out for the next pattern. However, if the music is just right and it sounds like up, there's like an up sound, the notes going up, you could three and four bring your feet together like you mean it, settle into your hip from there and then go ahead and walk out. On the flip side of that, we're usually dancing to the even numbers. We are dancing to the even numbers all the time. The metronome emphasizes the even numbers. So think about when you clap or you snap to a song. So you're like one, two, three, four. And if you didn't know it, when you clap or snap to a song that happens on even numbers, not on odd numbers. So you're doing that on even numbers. So if there are no lyrics whatsoever, there's no singing going on, there's no other instruments and you get to a part of a song that's kind of quiet with just this sound going on, then you may do a single step anchor and hold the five, address that single 
sound that you're hearing on the even number. So you would go one, two, three, and four, hold five steps, six, walk, one, two. And you could do that off of a spinning pattern as well. Three and four, hold five, step six. So you can do either one. You can go immediately to the five, hold the six, walk out one, or you can float over the five, three and four, float over the five, pick it up, step down on that snare beat or on that upbeat to emphasize that sound if there's no other music going on, and then go ahead and walk out with your follow through on the next pattern. So these are just some simple variations that you can do. Single step anchors are very effective for addressing music. Um, you can also do that single step type action because you want to. It doesn't have to be because of the leader. Again, you could come up here and do a sugar push and you don't always have to triple if there's a single syllable word right there and you'll start to get some bonus points for um, addressing the music, whether your partner is leading that or not. Anyway, so these are just some of the things that came to mind that I've been working on with some of my students and helping them to really up their game in West Coast Swing. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you like the video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up down there and share this and help me spread the word about West Coast Swing. I have a huge passion for it. Obviously you do too. You're watching the video. Thanks for watching. Talk to y'all soon.